looked at the papers published on the origin of life and decided that it was absurd that uh, the thought of nature of its own volition putting together a DNA or an A molecule was unbelievable. And I, I'm always running out of metaphors to try to explain what the difficulty is. But suppose you took <coughs> Scrabble sets or any word game sets, blocks with letters containing every language on earth, and you heap them together, and you then took a scoop, and you scooped into that heap, and you flung it out on the lawn there, and the letters fell into a line which contained the words to be or not to be, that is the question. That is roughly the odds of an RNA molecule given no feedback and there would be no feedback because it wouldn't be functional till it attained a certain length and could copy itself, uh, that such an RNA molecule uh, would appear on the Earth. And other people uh, have said the same thing more colorfully. Uh, some of them nature is here. Christian de Duve, the Nobel laureate, once wrote a letter uh, to nature uh, which was headed did God make RNA? Because it's hard to think of any other manner in which RNA, out of purely abiotic chemistry, would assemble itself on the early Earth. So uh, seeing this whole area called prebiotic chemistry, I decided my major attention still being funded by National Cancer Institute and dev devoted to how chemicals can rip apart DNA as a hobby, essentially. I started publishing papers which disassembled, deconstructed, if our German friend was, <laughs> so-called prebiotic chemistry, and showed that at every case, the result was due to the flagrant interference of the investigator in biasing the results to obtain the results that he wanted. <laughs> at one point, I went and spoke to the now, unfortunately, late Stanley Miller and asked him about the circumstances of his famous Miller-Urey experiment, the one with the electric lightning and uh, amino acids were formed. And he handed me a biographical piece he itself had written for something called the Transactions of the Copernican Society or something like that. And he described how in building his apparatus, he was concerned of uh, questions of safety. Because if you take a flask and you mix it with methane and hydrogen and ammonia, the most likely result is boom with flying glass in all directions, which is definitely not publishable. So with regard to safety, he built a certain apparatus, let it run for a number of days, and uh, at the end of the days, he looked at what he'd found, and he found a class of chemicals called hydrocarbons, the stuff that makes up the lakes on Titan, but no amino acids whatsoever. And he looked at this and said, this isn't interesting. And he threw it out. And he redesigned the equipment. He said, I was overcautious. This is not likely to explode. And he interchanged the spark and the condenser. And he reran re the experiment. And this time he got amino acids and not hydrocarbons. And he said, aha. And he published. <laughs> And thus we have the famous uh, Miller-Urey experiment showing the inevitability of amino acids <laughs> on the primitive Earth. And of course, the uh, 